and everyone's doing that, you know, like I, uh, we have to appreciate people more and not take people for granted. And that's also obviously true, but I'm just going to let you guys talk more because I'm getting, um, too sad. And, um, also to me, this isn't interesting what I'm saying. So I'm going to just pass it to you guys because you knew him better. Um, so uh, on that note, uh, anything else you want to say, Nando? I mean, we're going to keep talking about no, this, bring, obviously. No, let's bring Daniel but, um, in. We'll bring on our, yeah, Daniel Bessner, historian. Yes. Historian, yeah. Daniel Bessner, Jacobin um, contributing editor and a non-resident fellow at the Quincy Institute. <laughs> Let it never be said that he's in residency. Okay. Yeah. That's probably had, had Bernie won... Dan would have been fucking undersecretary for uh, Eastern Hemisphere Affairs or some shit like that. Uh, Secretary of State or Secretary of Defense, otherwise. That's like, the only thing yeah, you're going to settle go for. Home. Go yeah. or go home, yeah. But, but yeah, I, I just want to echo everything that, that Nando said. Um, I mean, the reason that we even know each other is because of Michael. Yeah. Well, I, was, I was in L.A. and he's like, yo, you should call, call Nando. And, and so I just want to emphasize that aspect of, of Michael being a community builder. And I think this is one of the things that he thought was so crucial to, to both building a left politics, but also just being a person in the world. He was one of the most engaged people that, that I've ever met. He, he had his hands in a million different projects with a million different types of people. You know, from me, a professor, to, to you guys, who was in, in to the riffraff, to the to the to the Hoi Polloi. Yeah. Uh, Hard to lie, but he was he was really someone who, who built community and was really focused on community. And I think that was part of his whole his whole being in the world. Um, and I, I think that he was um, just such a good hearted guy, and he's someone that that uh, really don't have much. At least I don't have much bad to say about him. He he, he really got along with everyone in, in a really unique way, and I, I think that just emerged not because he was a social climber. Like oftentimes you hear someone say that and you think they have no depth. But I want to, Michael was very funny and very biting, you know, and he, he could be like, like mean, funny, but he was ultimately a good hearted person. And yeah. I think that's, that was, that's why he was able to do it in such a way. And that's why he was such a good satirist. That's why he could do right wing Mandela or, um, you know, uh, evil Bernie Sanders, right? I think that he was able to get at that edge. It's like Dana Carvey was able to get at that edge because he's like a fundamentally good guy. And I think yeah. Mike was able to see what was in people. A good, a good satirist, particularly a good impressionist, is someone who has empathy. Yeah, I, exactly. Yeah. No yeah. one is talking about, and I don't know if he did it on air that much. Uh, Anti-Semitic Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> I love he did it on air just for me. Oh wow! Um, but it was a really good one. <laughs> He'd be like, "Here's the thing, okay? You know, I I want to endorse Bernie, but but my papa said he's a dirty Jew, oh, and God. I can't do that." <laughs> I don't know if he ever did it on air either, but whenever he would do like a foreign policy intellectual. He did it in like the Professor Frank from The Simpsons voice, like uh, hi, and it was like you know he had that like Jewish sense of sense right. of capability in some sense, you know, like a northeastern guy. Um, but yeah, and I, I mean, just what Nanda was saying about his focus on the international is, I also think really unique. I think it's very easy for all of us to get um, enwrapped and enraptured with domestic politics and what's going on, obviously because it has the most direct effect on, our li- effect on our lives. But Michael really had an internationalist humanism, and I think his socialism emerged more from his humanism than the other way around. I think yeah. that he was like, fundamentally, he viewed people as equal, regardless of where they were born, the color of their skin, of course, uh, that. But it, 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 it's really um, important to emphasize, and I think that's why, I don't know if it stayed in the subtitle, you guys could let me know, but there, is cosmopolitanism in the subtitle of Against the Web? Yes, it is. Right. So I think that's also a really important aspect. Um, and and I, I, I don't know the details of Michael's like background identity. My understanding is that he had some Jewish ancestry, but he like didn't necessarily. I, I mean, not, not sure. He grew uh, up very poor I mean, with hippie parents is basically yeah. what he was. He was a poor. Obviously, hippie. you look at the genes. I mean, not to say whatever. There's Ashkenazi in there. And, like, you can say, say what <laughs> yeah. you will. I don't care how you're. I'm surrounded about. by Jews in this on this yeah. broadcast. <laughs> I think sure. Someone told us we we looked alike, but he had that like what I think is one of the best one of the best elements of like what the, what the Jews really did give to the world, which, which, which is this cosmopolitanism, which is this acceptance. rootless cosmopolitanism, right? Some might say vulgar <laughs> vulgar cosmopolitanism. Vulgar yeah. ruthless, but I think that that was a really important element of his thought that he believed that people could be different, but that we could still live together and move toward a common project. And I think one thing to emphasize is that like I, I think he was getting a little bit fed up with sort of the inter- internal sniping on the left and he was yes. getting a little 
a little tired. I, I mean, Nando, I'm sure you've had the similar conversations, but the last few months, he was really talking about it. the reason this is so sad is that we we're one of the many reasons that he was talking about like changing courses a little bit and trying to yeah. make a direct effect on the world. And we were talking about projects that we were going to do. And I, um, I, I actually talked to him like you, Nando, uh, the night before, like 11, 1130 New York time. Um, and he actually sent me a bit of writing that, that I think is really, really effective. And I hope that uh, hopefully someday that'll see the light of day. But it was just a, a really beautiful message. And I just want to say it ended with something that was great, where he essentially said that we're all imperfect, that we all need to admit our mistakes, and that we have to stop, you know, just expecting expiation without forgiveness. And, and the line that he ended with was regeneration, not destruction. And I just want to like emphasize that that aspect of the regeneration, not destruction was just Michael in, in, in miniature, that, that idea of sort of building toward and not just to destroy, but to create, um, which is why his, his, his heart, his, his death is just so, so horrible for multiple reasons. But that spirit is something that I often find lacking on the left where people move for cloud, people move for likes and retweets. And he just never gave a shit. He never gave a shit about Twitter. Really. Yeah. You know, he was, he was really. Or he's a builder, and and it, this is why this is, is so terrible in so many ways. Yeah, I mean, what you talking about? Yeah, me and Daniel are friends now. You know, we're friends. We hang out. You know, and it was because of Mike. Uh, I'm friends with Waz because of Mike. You know, uh, he's like a connector guy. I mean, that's like a that's like a what I think it comes from like a bullshit kind of like management term. You know, like one of those like management studies guys who's like you know, there's like four types of people in this world. There's like you know, whatever, whatever. And like, one of them is like a connector. And mm. that's definitely, oh, yeah. that's definitely what Mike was. He was like constantly thinking, you know, who can I like, you know, I know this person and that person and they don't know each other, but like, I know that they're going to hit it off and they have complementary skills and, and, and whatever. And it's going to make the, the sum of them is going to be greater than the, you know, whatever the, the expression is. Um, greater, and, the sum is greater than the parts. Greater than the sum of its parts. Greater than the sum of its parts. Yeah. See, um, what we just did there, the three of us coming together to get the latitude correct. There you go. This is, this is exact. This is a microcosm for, for that exact metaphor. Yeah, exactly. uh, and um, yeah, I mean, it's, again, like I said, he had big plans. I mean, he was very ambitious. Like it was not, which is, I think, a good thing. You know, like, you know, he wanted to have an effect, like a major effect. He Like, again, he didn't want, he wasn't content just being like a, um, you know, kind of big in this world. Like he wanted to, he wanted this, he, he wanted to be big in the world. Um, and, and cause he knew that if he were, if that were to happen, it would be because he was able to help make a better world, you know? Um, and he was constantly thinking how he could do that. That's just, you know, constantly thinking about that and, and actually doing it, like actually do taking steps to, to do it. Like, you know, his follow through on that kind of thing was impressive, you know, like, I mean, how many times have you had the conversation like, oh, we should do the thing, you know, yeah, 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 sounds great. And then like, no, you know, it doesn't happen. He'd be like, he would like follow up and be like, hey, we should really do that thing. And, blah, blah, blah. and you know, like it's, and it's something that a lot of people have, have talked about in his death is like, I'm just shocked at like how good he was at like maintaining a friendship. I mean, it's just, that's a skill. It really is. And it's hard these days. And, you know, especially now when everyone's kind of in, in quarantine or whatever, but like he would check in, he would, you know, make sure everything was good. And then he would, you know, he like knew that you would be interested in that, but maybe you would be interested in this other thing. And I don't know. It was just, um, he was the only person that I talked to on the phone, literally uh, in my entire life. I remember <laughs> like not your mother. <laughs> that's a whole nother paid. We'll get into that next time. I'm on. But, yeah. uh, he, Honestly, I remember one time he set up a call and like 10 minutes in, I'm like, are we recording? And he's like, no, dude, we're just talking. And I'm like, oh, I, I had never, I, I, I just so few people our age actually did that. And and he was just u unique in that regard that he would call like every, you know, I would talk to him at least once on the month, once a month on the phone for an hour and a half, two hours. I did not do that with anyone else in my life. Yeah. And that would, I wouldn't, I would, I would not have called him. Like he is the one who like made the time and the effort to call and then, we just became such close friends over such a short, I met him in early 2018 and like he was in my regular text rotation, you know, he was someone I spoke right. to regularly and it was just, so he was really devoted because he was devoted to that people, 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 the people connection. Like he wasn't just a leftist interested in abstract theory. He was in 
uh, he was really um, interested in community building, and I think we need more of that. And, and that is, I think, one of the greatest legacies of the show. To me, it's the, it's the internationalism, which I spoke about, but it's also the, the focus on building a community of, of people that is empathetic and that is connected to one another, and that is at once um, devoted to a larger project, but also sees the humanity in everyone else. And I think, ultimately, that's what he didn't like about the intellectual dark web. That's what he wrote a book about it, because they tried to make everything into abstract reasons and, and rationalities, and, and he saw the dehumanizing effects of that. Yeah. And, and I just want to underline that he was really a humanist in the best sense, uh, in the best sense of the word. And I think all of our politics, all of our socialisms, could be better informed by uh, uh, the fundamental humanism that, that Michael represented. And I think that's why he's had such an outpouring of grief from people who knew him well and people who knew him less well, because that was just a palpable thing. And that's why it's so, it's, it's so devastating when Nando called me and let me, I didn't believe it. I mean, I'm like, what? I'm yeah, it took like 10 minutes to, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's, she was such a vibrant person. And it's it's just so horrible that this happens. Yeah, it is. Um, uh, well, I, so I knew him, I think, way longer than you guys did, but was not as close at all uh, to him. I mean, we were friends, we were friendly, but yeah, I didn't. I'm, I'm sure that I had you guys had more texting and, and you know with him over the sh- shorter period of time. Um, but I remember he really did like he changed a lot. Like he kind of reinvented himself. Um, and um, I was looking at photos. A friend of mine was sending me photos of all of us from years ago. And he was so much like nerdier. He looked so much nerdier. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. he, 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 one of the, one of the reasons why we became friends is because he asked me for fashion advice after I went on TMBS for the first time. He was like, Hey man, like you're a snappy dresser. Like, uh, you know, like, I need to, I need to get some tips from you. And like, you know, I, was like, I was like, yeah, of course, you know, like, but I, you know, I think that that, I think that he did that with a lot of people. Like, you know, you know about this thing, like yeah. Dan, Daniel, you know, like a lot about foreign policy because you're a fucking foreign policy professor at a fucking university. Like I need to learn from you, you know, like tell me things, you know? Um, but yeah, no, he definitely, you know, he, he, again, he, he, he had, he was very conscious about the way he put himself out in the world, um, which, you know, I think that there's there's nothing wrong with that. Like that, it's actually an important thing to 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 like take into account. You know, like the way you present yourself in front of people. If you want to make a challenging argument or something that's going to challenge their core beliefs, if you don't mind how you're like, that's the first thing they think about is like the first impression is how you present right. yourself to them. If you're like this kind of dour, um, annoying person, then they're going to shut off immediately. But if you're kind of funny and you look cool and your thing looks great. Like then, then there's maybe a chance that you're at least getting your foot in the door. Um, and then you can challenge like everything that they've been taught from when they were children by like, you know, you know, right. Yeah. Propaganda I mean, it, and all a that lot stuff. Of, it's kind of like why there are a lot of assholes in econ departments. Um, I guess less and less, but uh, like uh, the opposite side of that is, not because there are a lot of good Marxists in the econ departments, but like at at some level, the people who who study e- economics can can be kind of like. Let me. I'll just I'll just drop that and say what I was going to say, which is that a lot of good people don't want to focus on um, cosmetic things, right? But it's also like you can't like you were saying, you're not going to reinvent the wheel. So either like play the game, or do it another way. But um, yeah. yeah. One thing I just want to say about Michael's clothing choices, I'm actually wearing the black Adidas in honor of him. Yeah, there you go. But, but I, I, whenever he would wear the gold chain and sort of the, the Sopranos outfit, I, I'd always text him, you know, Big Pussy Brooks is back again. And he would he he, he, he had a sense of humor about himself. And I think that's yes. one of the things that he would, like, you can make fun of him. Like, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Him, absolutely. You could, like, be really biting with him and he would laugh, you know, and he'd right. come yeah. I, I think that's important. To emphasize and just to, to build on what Nando was saying, I think that it was also like one of the one of the reasons that he cared about clothes was I mean I'm sure he cared about clothes in the way that we all did, but also um, that I think it was really important to like win for him, you know, yeah. I, like he was sick and tired of the left losing, and I think one of the one of the biggest things of his project and that I I hope will be built on is this inchoate left that we're all a part of, is that like. Like Nanda was saying, like dressing is important, presenting oneself is important, and that we need to work within the structures that we have in order to actually win. And and that to me is one of the most important things of TMBS, where he would like 
talk about left-wing political strategy with people from all over the world. And I think that's a, a, an important element of his legacy is that we're, we're ultimately in it to, to change the world, not to feel good about ourselves, not for thought and things like that. And I, I hope that this provides sort of a, a, a moment for people to reflect on that and to reflect on sort of the short amount of time we have here, but also to reflect on Michael's legacy and the type of thing he was building, you know, the left is best type of type of uh, hashtag that he was really dedicating himself to. It. Yeah, um, I think that, uh, yeah, it, it's like a kind of a discipline in the name of, of the thing that you believe in, right? Everything, for, I mean, talking about clothes and, and saying like he wanted to win. It's true. It's like it, there can be a kind of self-indulgent um haterism that i'm guilty of too in lots of different areas but where it's like look do you want to do do you want to win this or not like you can like problematize things and feel bad for yourself or you can like go and you know i don't know ask nando villa how to dress better but um no it's true um and uh uh yeah i it's it's interesting like a lot of people were talking about how he was both you know he wasn't he was like interested in obviously changing the world. Um, there was some ego, but like, like I have ego. Like everyone has ego. Who who does? It, um, yeah, the sky's blue. But like, yeah. I mean, obviously, if you're know, if you're putting yourself out world. there for yeah, right, right. thousands was, of people to yeah. comment on every single little aspect about, like, well, actually, he's the neo Strasserite because, yeah. like, blah 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 or whatever. It's like. Yeah, you, you have, have to have ego. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, but you also, I mean, what's what's interesting is I thought it was really interesting what you said about um about how you have to have empathy to be a good satirist, which is totally tr- to be a good impersonator, which is really true. Um and um what uh, I think is like really interesting is that um you have to have somewhat of a thick skin. And I f- I actually feel kind of similar like I relate to Michael on this. I think think both we both had like a kind of thick skin but thin skin Oh yeah. It? Um, where I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, you can, you're, yeah. you're very courageous. You put yourself out there and you get a lot of hate, but you keep it going, you know? Uh, well, yeah. But then I also get, as you've seen that other side too, like I get very upset and, uh, you know, I assume that you and Michael had a similar thing where you would, I don't know, maybe would you like talk him? Would you be like, would he get upset and you'd be like your Zen encouraging self to him? Yeah. I mean, he would definitely get upset and, you know, he would definitely, you know, it's the pressure, the pressure of building an audience and maintaining it is, is, is a lot. I mean, let's be honest, you know, that Katie, like it's, it's a lot, like it's, I mean, it's not like, I don't want to say it's like the same thing as going down into the mines or some shit, you know, no, but it's like, same, it's, the same I, 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 it's exactly I, uh, the same thing. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> it's I exactly the same I, thing. I call minor identify actually. <laughs> yeah. But it's, you know, it's a, it's a pressure to like always be on, to always be interesting, to always be smart, to always have the right take, to, you know, shit's happening all the time. And you got to have the right. take. You got to be smart about it. You got to find your spin on it. You got to find the thing. And then, you, you know, you have to always be there. And, you know, you like if you're having a bad day, whoop, you know, you just got to that's got to be out the window. Like if you had a tragedy in your life, whoop, you know, you got to it's right. and you know, a lot of, I mean, that, that obviously got to him, like it gets to everyone, you know? Um, but again, I mean, I think ultimately, I mean, I, I'll never forget, I mean, cause I was with him the night of super Tuesday when Bernie basically was murdered. Uh, and, uh, you know, he was already, he was already like, he, not one second was he like wallowing in, in defeatism, which I 100% was, I was like, let's check the fuck out and do acid in, right. you know, Costa Rica, uh, for the next five years, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, he was like, nah, dude, like, you know, well, let's go. You know, like it was like, he was not one second. And in that sense, like he had an incredible resilience, um, in that he, I think he understood the, the, the stakes, but also the, the, the difficulty and I think it came from understanding history and you know people's liberation movements all over the world like yeah you think we got it hard you know and fucking left politics in the United States like try being like a Congolese freedom fighter you know uh, come on let's get the fuck up and go you know like yeah. 